If you want to know who and when Newcastle United are playing in the 2019-20 season, then stay tuned because we're going to talk about that right now. Hello good people, my name's Ian, welcome to another video on Real Football UK. If you haven't already, please hit the like and subscribe button and don't forget to press the bell notification as well so you don't miss a thing. Now today, the Premier League released their entire set of fixture lists for the whole season and we're going to be focusing on Newcastle United's fixture list today. We're going to be looking at who they're playing, when they're playing and we're going to sort of just delve into a little bit like... Uh, which parts of the season are better and which parts of the seasons are going to be trickier for Newcastle as we enter this season. Now, as a Newcastle fan, I have absolutely no idea what this season's going to entail. I mean, I don't even know who the manager's going to be, I don't know who the owner's going to be. Obviously, we're still hoping this takeover deal goes through and we, st we hope, I think most people hope that Rafa is still there. Uh, whether they, the, whether that will happen or not, I don't know. We could end up with a situation where we have a new owner and a new manager. We could end up with a new owner and Rafa in charge. We could end up with Mike Ashley and Rafa, or we could end up with Mike Ashley and some random manager. So everything's up in the air. We obviously know the fixtures now. We're going to talk about that in a second. But there's so much up in the air. I'm just going to assume when I'm talking about the fixtures today, I'm going to assume that Newcastle are still where they are now. So Rafa's still there and Mike Ashley's still there. And that kind of let me talk around the fixtures in a kind of reasonable way that we all understand. We're not going to get carried away about a takeover that hasn't happened yet. So let's start by looking at Newcastle United's first six fixtures. So Newcastle are going to kick off the season on August the 11th uh, with a home game against Arsenal. And actually the first six games, as you can see here, uh, are pretty, going to be a pretty tricky bunch. We've got uh, Arsenal at home, Norwich away, Tottenham away, Watford at home, Liverpool away and then Brighton at home. So in the first six games we're going to face Arsenal and Liverpool and Tottenham as well. And um, Liverpool and Spurs are both away from home, so two out of the first six games are really, really tough. And if we just go a little bit beyond that, the first nine games, we actually play five of the last season's top six in those first nine games. Because we have Manchester United and Chelsea uh, to kick off October with, Manchester United at home and Chelsea being away. What does that mean for Newcastle? Well. We're going to be fighting relegation, as things stand, we'll be fighting relegation. So I think what that actually really means is we have to capitalise on home games and we also have to capitalise on those games against teams that weren't in the top six last season. So obviously the opening day of the season against Arsenal, you'd like to think we could go into that game and, and possibly get a point. I think that's realistic, I don't think there's anything uh, to be ashamed of in sort of saying that or hoping for that. You know, to start the season without losing could be a huge thing. Um, if we can take a point from Arsenal, then we move on to Norwich away. Now, that's obviously going to be their, new, their newly promoted. They've just come up. That's their first home game. That's going to be a tricky, tricky game. But it kind of, because of the way our fixtures are early on, it's kind of a fixture that I think we need to take something from as well. And, and if we can get two or possibly four points from the first two games, I think most Newcastle fans will be absolutely delighted with that. We then have that run of Tottenham away, Watford at home, Liverpool away, and then Brighton at home. And I think really, we're looking at the two home games there, to, out of those four games, to sort of take at least one win, possibly two wins from. But it's absolutely vital that after the first six games, Newcastle have picked up a reasonable amount of points, otherwise it's gonna be a really, really long, hard season. And then as we enter October, we've got Manchester United, Chelsea, and Wolves. Manchester United and Wolves are at home, Chelsea are away. All three of those games are going to be incredibly tough. Um, it might be a good time to play Man United. I, I'm, I'm not sure Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is the man for them. I think that it could be a nice... Playing Man United in October could be a good time. It could be potentially a time when things aren't going their way, they're not good, and they won't probably have got rid of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at that point. So it could be a nice time to play them if Man United don't get off to a good start. I could be totally wrong there. Manchester United might get off to a flying start and it might be a, a bad time to play them. But I think, just looking at what's happened since they gave Solskjaer that permanent contract, I just think there's a playing Manchester United early at home, not necessarily the worst thing in the world. When the fixture lists come out, we always, I always look at who we play at the beginning of the season and then I always look at who we play around Christmas. I don't know why we do that, but I guess looking at the festive football fixtures always 
a good thing. I don't know, Newcastle never particularly do well around Christmas, but it's always good to see who we're playing. So, who are we playing at Christmas? Well, you can have a look. We've got Manchester United away on Boxing Day, which is a, a bit of a nightmare. And, and like, just talking about Man Manchester United playing them at home earlier, by December, I can absolutely see if things have gone wrong that Manchester United will have got rid of their manager at that point. They could be under a new manager by December. It could be one of those situations again, a bit like last season when we turned up, we played Man United and they just had their life back in them. They just had that oomph and they, they obviously beat us. And I just kind of worry that away to Manchester United on Boxing Day is not a good fixture for Newcastle United, particularly if Manchester United have got a new manager at that point. But we then follow that up with two home games. So we've got Everton at home on the 28th and Leicester at home on New Year's Day, barring the TV schedules changing. Um, and I actually think that's an okay Christmas for us. I think, I think if we can pick up some points over those three games, I think we'll be quite happy with that. And also the game immediately before Christmas is Crystal Palace at home. So actually, over the festive period, we've got three home games in kind of uh, nine or ten days. So that's really kind of positive. That's a really that should be a time when we we're looking to take some points from Palace, Everton, and Leicester. If we can win a couple of those games, I think we'll probably be pretty happy with that. Just one more thing about the football fixture list around Christmas time. Uh, Amazon Prime have entered the television rights market for the Premier League this season, and uh, all ten Premier League fixtures on Boxing Day and the midweek game. So when we play Everton at home, uh, both of Newcastle's games will be on Amazon Prime. Uh, and so, as will every other team's games in those two fixtures on it. Now, looking ahead to the end of the season, because uh, of course we look at the beginning, we look at the Christmas period, and then we tend to look at the end of the season, don't we? I think Newcastle's running's pretty tough this season as well. So we've got a tough start, and we've got a tough end to the season as well. And the reason that it's tough is because we play three out of our last six games no, sorry, out of our last five games, three of them are against top opposition. So as you can see, we have Manchester City away in the middle of April, and we have home games against Spurs and Liverpool at the end of the season. In fact, Liverpool is the last game of the season at St. James's Park. And who knows, uh, we could be seeing the champions of England play at St. James's Park on the last game of the season. I don't know how people feel about that. Let me know in the comments uh, if you think that might happen. Um, that's tough. If, if, that, if we get into a situation like last season where Manchester United, um, where Manchester City, sorry, and Liverpool are neck and neck again, um, they won't fancy playing us. I know that, but I, you know that's going to be really tough if they're fighting for the title on the last game of the season and they need something. That's going to be mega tough. But around those fixtures, we've also got away trips to Watford and Brighton. So you know, tough games, but certainly games where we can get points and I think it might be that we need to get some points from those games and possibly one of the home games as well. So I think November and December are crucial months for us. I've sort of mentioned that Christmas is not a bad period for Newcastle but actually before Christmas and November too it's also not a bad time for Newcastle this season. Apart from playing Manchester City uh, we've got a run of games in November and December where we don't face anyone who finished in the top six last season. So newly, we play Sheffield United and we play Villa and things like that, newly promoted teams, but we also play those teams who were sort of in and around us last season. So, you know, that is the crucial period. So if, if we can get a good points haul from November and December, and we set ourselves up heading into the new year with a, with a decent points total, that'll go a long way for our Premier League survival. That said, if we have a, an awful October and no, uh, November and December, we are going to be in big trouble, I think. I think, um, you know, obviously depending on how much Ashley invests in the squad, if he's still there, it's going to be a hard season again. We know that anyway. I mean, we knew you have to play everyone twice, but sometimes the runner fixtures helps you, doesn't it? And if we can get a bit of form going into November and December, it could be absolutely crucial for us. So, I want to know your thoughts on this. I want to know your opinions on Newcastle United's fixture list this season. Um, are you happy with the start? Are you happy with the end? What do you think about the Christmas schedule? Uh, what do you think will be the key parts of the season for Newcastle? Put your comments below. I'd love to chat to you about this a bit more and sort of see what we all think and feel. It's a bit of a weird one going into this because obviously we don't know what the state of the club's going to be. but. 
you know, I'm still excited for the new season. The football season's still the football season. It's still great fun. And, you know, we'll see what Newcastle can do. We'll pray that rap is still there. But yeah, let me know underneath what you think of the fixture list. And uh, also don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification for this channel that, so that you don't miss anything. And feel free to spread the word about Real Football UK. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.